The video you are about to watch is provided by Sax Tanks, the crazy aquarium guy. <laughs> Hello fish lovers, welcome to Zach's Tanks Crazy Aquarium Guy. I almost feel obligated to make this video because I have done so much research on puffers, freshwater puffers, because I love them so much. And they are so different from each other. And some stores and some people really believe that they are the same. But they are really not. It's huge difference between them. All species. So what should we do? Start with the biggest one, start with the smallest one, or just go along? I'm gonna help you with tips on how to, how to trim their beaks, and I have one, more than one trick. And this is not all my ideas. This is me watching 150 videos, reading papers, and collecting knowledge into one video to help people. So best tips for trimming your faca, your puffer teeth down or something like that. I'm gonna call it something like that so we can help and educate each other. That's the whole point, right? Educate each other so we all keep our animals more healthy and alive. Okay, we start with one, the first one because it's so popular right now and people don't realize how crazy it is. And that is the Amazon puffer, South American puffer. You will get a hint. You, you will get a match. It's not a Titer Odun, so it's not actually poisonous as the other ones are. Poisonous inside, they're not poisonous to touch. Um, they can be kept together. They hate being keep, kept in a cube aquarium. I kept them in a cube aquarium. They go against the glass all the time because they want to swim back and forth and back and forth. So four feet tall, four feet tank at least. They can get to over eight, four inches long. Centimeters, I was thinking, centimeters. Eight to 10 centimeters is four inches. And uh, so, and their teeth is growing like crazy. So, we start simple. Whatever puffer you have, when you first buy it, make sure it eats whatever it wants to eat. If it doesn't eat at all, there is big problems. We take that in the next step. But assuming you have bought a fish that eats, even if it is a live fish. So you bulk him up or her. And then, when you bulk him up for a month, you start medicate. And if it's wild caught, or maybe if it's not, if, you, if it was in a store with a wild caught pleco, he could have caught something from the wild caught pleco. So that's also important. Look at the tank mates when you buy them. Oh, over there is there. It's not only the puffer in the tank. Where is this from? This is wild caught for Amazon, blah, blah, blah. But if we're talking like dragon puffers, uh, hairy puffers, uh, pig nose puffers, all of those are wild caught. So this approved to all of them. Just get them healthy. Feed them um, zebra danios, white clouds, cheapest ones. Try to get healthy ones so you don't get them other diseases, of course. Okay? And they will not keep their food if they have some uh, something nematodes or uh, parasites in them. So they're not going to be, be able to grow even if you give them 50 a day. So start with this. Not this exact brand, but something like this. Now you have the picture enough to, go, to search what it is. 
And that is a long treatment, and you do it once, and then you wait for a month, and you, then you do it again. That's pretty harsh on the fish. That's why I want you to get him in, settle in, get him well fed before you do this. This is a long journey with pignal puffer, drag, dragon puffer, uh, humpback, uh, humpback puffer, same as dragon puffer, uh, hairy puffer, and stuff like that. Their beaks grow the slowest of all because they are lurkers they are not just eating crabs snails blowing in the sand they do that as well but not not compared to all the other small ones you can almost see that on their mouth their mouth comes from underneath instead of just coming from the front so they eat fish they stay still nobody sees me fish comes by snap you can't even see it, it goes so that fast so try to get him on to uh, uh, live fish if he refuses to eat uh, peeled shrimp or I don't think you should peel the shrimp actually because it's a lot of good minerals and calcium in Atlantic shrimp shells and the rum underneath the stomach of the females of the Atlantic shrimp. So give him with the shells on. And same thing, don't give him cooked. They are, Atlantic shrimp are always cooked because they take them out, they are hollow looking and they cook them on the boat. That's why they come in pink. They are already salted and cooked. But when I talk about tiger shrimps or uh, uh, now I forget the name, you know what I mean, the big shrimps that the king of DIY always throw in. Keep the shells on and keep them raw, buy the raw ones. First one, the raw ones are cheaper because they haven't done anything to them. They are raw, they are peeled and they are peeled and cooked to choose from. The cheapest one is the best raw not peeled because they get calcium and minerals and vitamins in from the shells they're not gonna care about that that's soft for them the shells remember these guys can chew through snails okay so that's covering the lurker puffers I think let's go over to I'm not going to talk about saltwater puffers and brackish puffers you have to talk a little bit about. So let's end the myth here and now. Green spotted puffers are brackish or even light salt water. They can only tolerate fresh water for a couple of months in the beginning and then they will die. End of discussion. Okay? Figure 8 puffers is the right opposite. They can tolerate light, brackish for the whole life. But they are actually a true freshwater puffer. And there is Amazon puffers and green spotter puffers and figure 8 puffers that can be really hard to get to eat something else than frozen foods. And here is my tips for that. You start bulking them up, like I said, you do this, if they're wild caught, I would do this even if they weren't wild caught, just in case. After I'm done with this treatment and change water in between, follow the instruction, blah, 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 I would do this. I would, know, I would actually start with this if it's not wild caught. If it's wild caught, I would start with parasites after feeding them up so they are strong because they've been through a lot of stress if they're wild caught uh, otherwise I would start with this close up again you see what it treats fungus, fin rot, bacteria all the common things that they get when they are stressed when they change uh, from one water to another, when they are shipped, when they get ammonia burn, perfect. And if you live in Sweden, you're very lucky. Then you can ask me where I buy this stuff, because this costs six dollars. 
But when I go to the guy in the city that sells the same thing, he charged me $20. So it's a really big difference where you buy it. That's why I, I would love to have a Swedish channel and help my Swedish people because I'm so tuned in because I was at home, depressed, living off my savings, taking loans. So all I did 24-7 for years was read up on everything and look at every website available and every pet store available and then see which pet store if I need this product is the cheapest, the best, the most for the money. Okay? Let's see. We're going to jump back and forth because I don't have a manuscript. Um, big shout out to Dan Fish who taught me the latest tip because I could never get my Amazon puffers to eat uh, even pond snakes. I couldn't get them to it. They only wanted frozen food. So I had to go to the dentist with them as m me uh, m being the dentist. I have videos on it if you want to see. I sedate them with clove oil, which is a huge risk because they get like this. So it looks like they're dead. But for a couple of minutes, you can do it if you do it fast, like one or two minutes. Then back to the fresh water and they wake up again. And then I trim the beaks down and put them in there. But after I'd done that two times, I was like, I'm not going to want to do that. It's not, this is not seem natural to me but Dan Fish had a super good idea I just gave it away to another guy that asked me in the question about his green spotter puffer that wouldn't eat anything else you first get him used to their favorite frozen food now we're talking about the smaller puffers uh, but this will help with the bigger puffers as well, but especially the smaller puffers, because uh, you know why when I come to that. They give oyster shells that are crushed up for extra calcium to chickens. It's super cheap. You can go to like a, a farmer's market or I don't know what it's called in English, but we have stuff that sells flowers, blah, blah, blah. And, they sell stuff like that. And you buy a big bag for nothing, like $3, 10 pounds, nothing. And you mix repashi, crushed oyster shells, because oyster shells are super hard. Trust me, being a chef, cutting myself a few times, opening one, they are hard. But crushed, crushed oyster shells, repashi, mixed in with their favorite frozen food then they will start to nip at it that is the really good point and that is shout out to Dan's fish he has an aquarium channel I never heard about it before and I was like brilliant now I can never now I don't have to be afraid of keeping any puffer because this will work for sure it works on his fish and it worked on the Amazon puffers, the only puffer I didn't get successful with of all the different puffers I, that I kept. And I kept the Dragon puffers for five years and even if Aquarium Co-op said, oh, it's enough to feed them this and he says Amazon puffer can, you can feed them krill and pond snakes and that would be enough to trim their beaks down. That was just because it was a rush and everybody wanted Amazon puffers. So remember, he still is a salesman at first, not just a hobbyist. Don't believe everything he says because he's the real king of... He's a really good guy, I know that. He helps us, he got tons of information, but he also wants money and he's really super cheap. So think about that. Don't listen to every advice he said. I lived with my dragon puffer for four years and I have huge sleeping problems. 
Not just like, eh, I mean like one week, 14 hours total for the whole week. And my dragon puffer tank for a year was next to my bed. He was more active than my fahaka during the night. So I actually think he, they are nocturnal or that he specialize can see a little bit, bit better in the dark. Just from some shivers. That's enough for him to hunt. And he killed snails. I tried all snails. He killed them. Because he hated them. I don't know why. But he didn't eat them. And his beaks didn't grow at all. But he loved fish. And I got him on to repash his super greed. So apparently he felt himself. I need more vitamins. I can't just eat shrimp. Give me something else. And then I mix uh, 20 or 30% bottom scratcher. So it still smells really good because that's a lot of protein in it. Uh, with 70 to 80% super green. Super green is like my guppies don't even like it. It's for trophies. It's pure algae. And my dragon puffer ate it. That is a carnivore. They are so smart. I bet he realized I need more vitamins. I need to eat something else. He felt it in his body. Oh, let's see if I covered everything. Um, Faka puffers, super easy. Just feed them whatever they want until they get big enough and then you amp up the snail hardness, uh, the hardness of the shells of the snails. I'm so lucky, I just bought a new Fahaka Fry. If you watch my channel, you know that. And he already eats pond snails. He prefers them to bloodworms. Bloodworms here, pond snails here on the bottom. He goes for the pond snails. So either the breeder is good enough to already feed him pond snails or it's just instinct, pure instinct, that that is the actual food he needs. I never kept the pond snake before, I never had problems with that. But now I'm super glad that I have four different kinds of snails in my uh, giant ramsom snail tank, because then I can do this transfer method. The only thing I hate is that Sweden is Politicians are so stupid and think that apple snails and mystery snails can survive winter and that they eat all plants when they actually only eat dead plant leaves. So the Colombian, giant Colombian uh, ramson snail devours potatoes, zucchini, Cucumber, spinach, uh, potos plant, everything you put in, even carrots if you starve them. A little bit too sweet. Tomatoes was the only thing they were just like, no, that's my limit, so I took it out quickly before it fouled the water, but I wanted to try. That was too sweet. But pretty much any vegetable you had. Uh, yeah, so it, oh, that is perfect. If you cook at home, you have paprika, you don't want to eat the seeds, you don't want to eat the stem, but you want the red nice stuff. And it's tons of vitamins and color enhancings in paprika. Same with chili. I throw them in. They eat it. And then it gets into the, their stomach and they are full of vitamins. And then I give that to my puffers. And I know, some think, but I don't have a Fahaka puffer. I only have a Harry puffer and it's too big for him. No, it's not, because when they are hatched, they are hatched like this. So if you're successful with breeding them, ask me for advice how to do that. And pick a baby giant ramson snail. And it will be the same size as a ramson snail, but still with harder shell. You see what I mean? The ecosystem, everything goes around. 
when you cut your Caesar salad, you don't eat the bottom. It's just the root. They love it. Asparagus, the woody part in the bottom. They love it. Parsley. I go in between. I have a lot of parsley. I'm being nice to them. It's full of iron, so it's good. Because I know everything because I'm a chef. I know what's in them. I know the vitamins in the actual food. So I know what's good. Broccoli, frozen, really good food. It's going to smell a little bit. That's the only when you feed them. But they eat them up pretty fast. So if you can take, if it's summer and you can keep windows open and take it for eight hours before they devour them, feed them that. And green peas, super cheap, buy frozen, super food for them as well. And all of that in the stomach of them. And as soon as they ate them, two days later, you feed it to the fahaka. That's why my, why my fahaka almost grew to full size within four years. I don't think I even kept him for four years. I think it was three years and eight months or something. From hollow fry to full size because of that. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you and trying to teach you, okay? See if I forget something. Mm. Uh, why I'm so, so much in love with figure eight puffers is because they were the easiest one of all the puffers to eat pellets. I just put in cheap, high calorie pellets. Watch my latest live stream, the one with the sinking one, always sinking foods. They are always better quality because they push them together, yet more food for the money. It's not air in the food. So sinking pellets is almost always better, except flake food for endlers and guppies, of course, because they love to eat that surface. And um, best food, in my opinion, for endlers, nothing to do with puffers, but I throw it in there because I never seen anyone try it. I got from 100 endlers to 600 endlers in three months by feeding them dried, peeled artemia eggs. They are so small that a newly hatched endler, they are this size, can eat it. And it doesn't sink because it's so light, so it's finer than flour. So it sits on the top. And they live on the top, so they can eat around the clock. And you can't feed too much because it doesn't gonna foul the water too much. Ah, what else can I help you with? I know it's a long video, but if you watch this video, you will be super happy and get a lot of information. And you will keep a healthy puffer. So think about that. Look at the puffer. How does he look? How does he behave normally? If he is a puffer like Harry Puffer, uh, Pig Nose Puffer, the red, I forget the name now in English, the red one that also sits still, and uh, the dragon puffer sits still all day like this. They are lurkers. They eat probably 80% fish and 20%. So they don't, they don't have the same problem with the beaks. So don't worry about that. Worry more about internal parasites because they are always wild caught. I did it six times with this one to my dragon puffer before I start to see him really start to grow. So he had something from the wild. Um, yeah, so medicate them. Absolutely everything It's important. Medicate them and use something mild. And don't use ick X unless you see it is ick x because ick x is really good for ick x but it's super bad for your aquarium because it kills off the biology it kills off all your good bacteria that you keep in there so you, it's almost like starting a tank over so don't use ick x use another medicine that treats everything else but ick x first because they don't die quickly from ick 
even though they look terrible, they do actually don't. And I would also try salt before I go to X medicines. And if salt and this doesn't work and they still have ick, then I would go to ick x. And then you will probably kill off your, all of your plants if you have them. So I would take the plants out if you have big, beautiful sword plants. They are especially doesn't like ick x. Uh, Cryptocoreans can probably take it. They're like, okay, we're gonna rest now. They're putting some shit on us. So they're gonna be fine. But um, the finer the plant, the more punishment it's gonna it's gonna take from uh, medicines. So you know Monte Carlo, Ikex, it will die. So you understand what I mean? Liliopsis, small grass, or Stagiteria. Sagittaria, a little bit more hardy, would not die from EKX. Liliopsis would probably die. So it's like that. Uh, do, you have a, do we have any puffer left? Yeah, and this is ridiculous. Uh, I'm going to go against the king, the real king, because he has so much more knowledge about puffers and all fish in general than the king of DIY, in my opinion. The king of DIY are really good. I'm not saying that he's not professional and know a lot of stuff, but he has no idea about community fish. And 90% of normal people keep community fish, not monster fish or breeding discus. It's expensive. So, he knows a lot about that. Listen to him. I love the video he made the other day when he showed you how to make the mix. I'm a chef. I know exactly what he meant. It's perfect. Took out the fat because that will stay in the fish body. But I actually got a good idea for his pacus that would be a lot easier that he could do as a extra thing for their beaks. Uh, and you don't have to prepare anything, and it's very cheap. Just buy a thigh frozen from a chicken, and uh, what do you say, thaw it? Wait till it's not frozen. Take the skin off, because there is where all the fat is on a chicken. Barbed wire, hang it down in the middle so it doesn't go to the bottom. They rather eat in the middle of the column because when one bite it swings to the other side and then feed your piranhas like that and they will go crazy for that chicken leg. And if they are small, chicken wing. So that was a food video, mostly about puffers. But I want to educate people about that because I see so many people buying puffers and I understand why. I love mine like a cat and cried like a baby when it dies and had to, to get a new one. Even though I still want to get a Mabu puffer and figure eight puffers and a bunch of other puffers, Harry puffer for sure, uh, I had to get the new Fahaka. That's how much I loved him, her. Still saying it wrong. Typical male. Because it's ferocious fish. It's got to be a male, right? Then lay tons of eggs. Need to change the name from Kingpin to Miss Sunshine. And by the way, if you're still not in the poll, because this video is going to come out after the other one. What are we going to call the new Faka. I want a subscriber that uh, calls out the name. I don't want to choose it myself. Unless you love Miss or Mr. Moonshine. Because that is my suggestion. But it would be so much more fun if it was like last time, I think it was Lisa Crowley that if I said it wrong now, I'm terrible because now I said it two times and 
she is called Debra or something. But uh, it was, to be fair, it was a couple of years ago. One name, 500 comments every eight, 80 days. So don't judge me too hard, Lisa, if it wasn't you, or Debra, if it was you. But I want the subscriber to uh, to uh, name my fish. It's much more fun like that. Then we have 600 brains thinking about names instead of just one. Okay? I hope I covered as much as possible if I didn't. Uh, and yeah, if you want to keep the easiest puffers of all, keep the small Indian puffers. They are the only ones that you don't have beaks growing at all. You can just feed them and, but uh, no, that's a good thing. I can also say that. People say, I can only feed them bloodworms all the time because their beaks are not going. Bloodworms is the worst frozen food. So do, do not do that. Feed the mice, krill, artemia, white mosquito larva. Not black mosquito larva because they are often bred in ponds with lots of parasites. Same with tubifex. And bloodworms is like giving Big Mac with extra sauce. You understand? It's not good food. It's a treat. It's not a staple food. So even though they love it, their beaks not growing, don't fatten them up because fish don't want to be fat. It's bad for their kidneys and livers to have because they store fat. They don't burn fat like people. They store it. So they can actually die from getting too much fat. If I fed salmon, they would probably eat it because they were crazy. If I fed salmon to uh, my turtles, they would eat it, but salmon is one of the fattest fish out there. So they would get obese and get problems from that. So of course I choose a white fish. And with fish it's pretty easy. Is the meat white? It is not a lot of fat in it. That's just the simple rule of it. People don't realize that pork, the sirloin pork, or chops, but without the bone, is sirloin. It's like sirloin in beef. Has less fat than the cow. So that would be healthier, actually. And if you're super rich and live in a mansion and want to do the king of DIYs, discus food. Choose filet mignon, bad quality, from uh, Brazil or something, super cheap, because they don't have any fat in them. So you don't have to cut out the fat, like he has to do when he prepared the heart. And it has mo more protein and less fat. But Fine beef should have fat because fat with fat comes flavor. So then we go in the opposite. If you're going to feed your fish meat by sheep, shitty brands without fat in them. If you're going to treat yourself like you have seen Kobe beef, 50% fat. Too much for my taste, actually. Wagyu. Mm. No, it's good, but it's not the same thing anymore because it's so much fat and as always over half an hour but this video is gonna help so I would probably get 500 views but maybe in 10 years I get 20,000 views and helped thousand puffers being kept alive so that was my point with this video not good at all for my channel but super good for helping people and helping puffers. Much love from the Crazy Aquarium guy. That was all.